Hey, good evening, Sherwood family. It's good to be with you again this evening, and I uh, hope you're having a, a good new year so far, a good start to the new year. I always appreciate you joining in and, and having some Bible study with us, and uh, I've been missing y'all, and um, I hope that you're staying warm, staying healthy. If you are a guest with us this evening, maybe visiting with us for the first, second, or maybe the third time, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notified about when we uh, post a new video or you can quickly and easily find us the next time you want to join our worship service on Sunday or maybe our Bible study that we have on Wednesday nights right here on YouTube. It's good to be with you. As always, our church family, those of you who are not here with us in person, I love you and I miss you and uh, I'm, waiting. I'm excited to to see you again someday. I'm excited for the vaccine coming out. Maybe that'll ease the fear of a lot of folks and, and give them a chance to come back and to, to worship with us. I look forward to that day. But until then, just stay safe, stay healthy. We want you to be here with us eventually when the time is right, okay? If you got your Bibles with you this evening, go ahead and open up to the book of 2 Timothy. We're going to be there here in just a moment. 2 Timothy will be starting in chapter 2, but also we will begin chapter 1. So while you're opening up to that book, uh, I want to <coughs> call your attention to something. Um, by the way, we uh, just because holiday time and everything, I mean, we're running into bumps in the roads and snags and scheduling and that sort of thing. So we're supposed to be having our leadership conversations lesson, but things just happen. So we're just going to kind of go with the flow. Hopefully we will have another leadership conversation next week, next Wednesday with one of our elders. But until then, we'll just kind of go with the flow. All right. So I want to draw your attention to something. You may have seen what happened recently with uh, the prayer that took place on the Congress floor, there was this ordained uh, pastor who was called upon to lead a prayer for the opening Congress meeting. And in his prayer, he did a couple things. Number one, he asked for the um, blessings of a god by the name of Brahma. If you don't know who or what Brahma is, Brahma is the name of a Hindu god, and that is an idol. And then after that, after he asked for the blessings of this idol, he then closed out his, his uh, prayer by saying, Amen and Awoman. You see, this guy took to mean, or he had this idea that... When you say amen or amen, he thought it was a gender thing. And he thought that uh, that is um, very disrespectful to women because it says amen, M-E-N. And so he wanted to include gender inclusivity. He wanted to include women as well. So he said a woman. Now, here's the thing. The word amen has nothing to do with gender whatsoever. It simply means so be it or let it be so. Let it be. Okay. It's a, it has nothing to do with gender at all. And um, there have been very, uh, very, very many tons and tons of funny things circulating on the internet now uh, with men and women and, and making fun of what this guy did because it was quite comical. It was, it was, it was crazy. And uh, there's been a lot of things that have been going around, a lot of memes, a lot of uh, puns, a lot of just little quirky things that have been kind of fun. We've been having a good laugh at it. And I've been participating in it too. You know, uh, it's, it's been kind of comical. But something has come across my mind, and that's what I want to talk and, uh, and look at tonight and, and look at some Bible things, some Bible verses regarding this particular topic. Here's the thing, even though it's as funny as it may be, and it was, and we have had a good time with it, there's some very sobering things about what just took place the other day. The first thing is, this was on purpose, okay? This, this thing that he did was on purpose. You see, the church is under attack. 
a lot of things in our country are under attack, but the church itself is under attack. And um, it's got this, there's this idea going around that the church has to be bullied and be forced into thinking and accepting the exact same things that the world is trying to teach us. And so what comes across my mind is this, is, this happened the other day. We have a guy who has been a pastor, an ordained pastor is what he calls himself, since the 70s. He's been a pastor for quite a while. He's supposed to know what amen means. He's supposed to know that if you are a Christian, what you are saying and admitting and confessing is that Jesus Christ is the risen Savior. He's the Son of the living God. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And when you confess something like that, what you are doing is confessing also that He is the one and only true God, and there is no other God whatsoever on the face of the earth. All other gods or other things or people are all idols. And the Bible is very clear about idolatry. And so what this guy was doing is he's falling in line with everything else that the world is pressuring us into. It's you must be accepting of everything. The church must change in order to be accepted and relevant and good in the eyes of the world. And I'll be honest with you. I wonder where is this going to stop? When is it going to stop? Is it going to? What's next for the church? What's 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 next for um, for uh, what we're supposed to teach and that sort of thing? And I, I I always always try to stay away from politics and the pulpit and the classroom. I really do. But you know, um, right now it looks like. Uh, our country is going to be run by some folks who think along the same lines as that guy. They think along the same lines of the church must compromise itself. And that's, that's a very scary thing. As a whole, they want to um, take religious freedoms away. You know, And so we are put into a situation here where we must, we must make a decision about where we're going to stand. And so that's why we're going to look in 2 Timothy, because Paul wrote to Timothy about several things, and one of the things that he has mentioned to him is you've got to stay strong, Timothy. You can't give in. You've got to remain faithful. Now, one of the things I like about this letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy, is Paul does something that I'm glad he did. In chapter 2... Here's what he wrote to Timothy. We're in, first, uh, we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. He says, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. Now, you're talking to Timothy. Timothy's a guy who was raised in, in, a, in a household who had a faithful grandmother and a faithful mother. They taught him the gospel. They taught him the, the way it should be done. They um, they make sure they made sure to pass on to him faith principles. Um, he has become a massive leader <clears throat> in the church. And Paul tells him, "Remember Jesus Christ," almost as if you might forget some things or don't forget who you're representing. Don't forget who this Jesus Christ is. Don't forget that. And so. I like that because what that tells me is Timothy needs some encouragement because there is a chance, possibly, that he might either purposely forget or accidentally forget about his commitment to Jesus Christ. There might be a time when he is forced to make a decision about his faith. And when that time happens, Paul says, Timothy, remember Jesus Christ. Don't forget. Don't forget who you're representing. Don't forget Jesus Christ. Remember, he is the, he, he's, he's descended from David. He's been raised from the dead. That is the gospel. 
Don't forget that, Timothy. And I like that. And so what I want to do this evening is just remind you, refresh your memory about a couple things. Don't forget, okay? That's kind of, that's what I want us to remember tonight. So now go back to chapter 1 because what Paul is doing is he's reminding Timothy. And I wanted to start in chapter 2 because I really like the way Paul words it. But he, he continues to remind Timothy of some things. Okay, so let's start in chapter 1 now. Let's go back to chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Let's just start in verse 3. Timothy, uh, Paul says to Timothy, I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you, again he's telling him to remember, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So Paul is reminding Timothy again. He says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith. The faith that you had inherited from your grandmother who passed it on to your mother. And what's interesting about Timothy is his, grand, his dad is a Greek which means he's not faithful. And so he's living in a household where he's got a faithful mother, but not a faithful dad. And the grandmother and the mother thought it enough to make sure he's got to be taught the right way. He's got to be taught of faith in the Son of the living God. He's got to be taught faith in Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth. So he's reminding Timothy, he says, I want you to remember who you are. You are the descendant of a grandmother who's faithful and a mother who's faithful. And now you are carrying on the torch of faith. And I expect you to pass it on not just to your kids, but also to everybody else that you want to teach. To everybody else that needs to hear the gospel. I'm reminding you to fan into flame. But then he says this. Um... I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. God did not give us a spirit of fear. He's telling Timothy, the faith that you were given, this faith that you have, you know it well, Timothy. It is not something that is supposed to be fearful. Don't be scared. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. This is not... A, a faithful gift that you have right here, this is not something to be ashamed of or afraid of. The Spirit of God did not give you that spirit of fear. Instead, he said, we give you a spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. Power. You got the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have power. You got love. The way you treat people, the way you show people the gospel of Christ, and self-discipline. He says, you know, you've got a choice every single day to wake up and either deny or accept ungodliness and immorality. And your self-discipline in the gospel and in the faith of Christ and in, in the words of God, your self-discipline determines how you will not only accept those things that day, but also how you will live and teach people about what you believe. Your self-discipline about what you choose to accept in your life and X out of your life because it's no good, that comes from the power that you were given from the Holy Spirit. Not fear, but power. The way you can love the unlovable, that's powerful. And that is only given from the Holy Spirit, not fear. And so he's reminding Timothy, don't ever fear. Don't ever give up. Don't ever lose faith. Don't ever stop loving. Don't ever stop being disciplined. And look at verse 11. And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. Because you've been given a spirit of 
power and not fear. Paul is, Paul is expecting not just Timothy, but is expecting you and I not to let the world's influences infiltrate the Lord's church. He's expecting us to not be ashamed of the things of the gospel. To not be ashamed to tell the world, I believe that there are just two genders because that's the way God made them. I believe that, that every life is equal. Black and white and brown and, and whatever other color there is, whatever race there is, they're all equal. I don't care what the world has to say. God made us all equal. I believe that every life is, is worthy of, of living. I believe every life is, is precious. We are formed in the womb by God. That's why I condemn the act of abortion. We don't listen to what the world has to say about that. There is no question about it. I give you a spirit of power to not be ashamed of the things that I'm writing to you in this book. Don't be fearful. You stand up for the truth of the gospel. You don't let the world seep in and poison the church. You certainly don't let the world seep in and poison the relationships in the church. We are the body of Christ. We stick together. We love each other. We move forward together. We grow together. We laugh together and we cry together sometimes. That's the body of Christ. And we don't need the world telling us how we're supposed to treat one another or how we're supposed to accept one another because the guy who created the world told us in this book how we treat one another and how we accept one another. And part of that treatment to one another is love and grace and mercy. And sometimes it gets kind of ugly because we know that somebody's lifestyle is sending them to hell and we can't have that. We've got to love them and bring them back to the church. Don't be fearful. Don't be pushed around. Don't let the world tell you what the church is supposed to be like. The church needs to tell the world what the world is supposed to be like. Because the creator of the world showed us and told us exactly what the world is supposed to be like. And it's a tough task, church. Sure, well, that's a tough task. It's hard to do. Because there are times, let's just face it. There are times when we're fearful. That's, that's a fact. And when those times come around, pray to God. Ask Him. Plead with Him. Give me power. I don't want to be fearful. I don't want to bend the knee. <clears throat> I don't want to give in. I want to have the guts and the heart and the courage to talk to that person right there. But I'm nervous. Give me power. I want to be able to say no and that's wrong, but I'm afraid because everybody else over there, everybody else in that group of, of family or everybody else in that group of friends, they all think the same way, and I'm the only one who thinks that that is wrong. Give me power not to give in because your word says that is wrong. And I want to be in line with you and not in line with the world. Give me the courage, give me power to be able to say that's wrong. Give me the courage and give me the power to be able to deny and not participate and to trailblaze the way for Jesus Christ in the midst of a crooked and depraved world. We need to be reminded of this. Timothy needed to be reminded multiple times who you are what you're standing up for, what you're preaching, what you're teaching. And it's going to be tough sometimes, Timothy. But you got to do it, man. And we need the same reminder. We need to be reminded of who we are representing, what message we are giving out to the world. We need to be reminded to stay faithful and to, to stay courageous and to do it out of love and grace and mercy. Let's stay faithful. Let's be reminded about who we, whose side we're on and what we need to be saying and doing. And it's hard, I know. It's difficult sometimes. It's frustrating sometimes. It's, uh, it's nerve-wracking sometimes. And it's just scary sometimes. And that's why we need to ask for prayer, uh, for power and not fear. Let's go to God in prayer right now.
Father in heaven, thank you so very much for just another day of blessings. Thank you for giving us another day. Father, thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. They are new every morning, and we are so thankful for that. As we wrap up this lesson tonight, Father, we have seen just a couple of verses in your word that tell us as children of God, as disciples of Christ, we need to be people who are powerful and not fearful. So, Father, as we <clears throat> take that mentality, that gospel truth out to the world, let us be reminded, Father, about who we're representing, who we're working for, and the kind of message that we need to, to speak about, but also the kind of message that we need to live. Our deeds that we constantly do on a daily basis, may they always bring you glory. May our actions, our words, and our deeds give you ultimate glory. So people will be in awe about how awesome, how powerful you are. Give us power, Father, not just timidity. We don't need that. We need power so that we can live the right kind of way, speak the right kind of way, and, and uh, give the right kind of message to people. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel message. Let us stand firm and stand tall with courage as we stand up for you and your word. Thank you always for your sons. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Sherwood family, it's been a blessing being with you tonight. Thank you for allowing me into your home tonight. Thank you for uh, joining me in this Bible study. I hope it's been edifying for you. I hope it's been encouraging. And if you're joining us from afar or maybe not from our, our membership but you are considering, we are always um, excited to meet new people and have new members. And so we invite you to come to our worship at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. We are in person. And um, you can join us online at 10 o'clock as well if you, if you don't feel comfortable joining us in person. Uh, either way, though, we invite you to, to join us, be with us, and uh, if you need to, get in touch with us uh, any way you can. We certainly um, appreciate that. We encourage you to do that. Sherwood family, it's been good being with you all tonight. I love you and I miss you. Stay faithful. Uh, stay healthy. Stay safe. I look forward to seeing you again when you're ready to come visit with us. Uh, we, we miss you so very much, but we love you. And uh, we are praying for you always, and we'll talk to you later.